got a good one. He's got a good one. This is the definition of a cheap bait that might just not work at all. The purple Japanese bait coming in clutch, and this is the expensive one. Ladies and gentlemen, yes. welcome back. Check us out, man. Today we are going cheap versus expensive Japanese lures. We're out here with Ryan Rigged, who just picked up a lot of different Japanese baits from the Asian supermarket. These are one dollar baits. He even grabbed a couple that were like three dollars. So here's my thinking. We've got some DRT custom Japanese swim baits right here. They're kind of like a, a soft plastic jerk bait. We're going to throw these out against those one dollar baits. So it's going to be one versus ten dollars. These are some of the most expensive fluke style baits I have ever seen. Major shout out to Jared Swafford for hooking us up with these. And then I even brought out the DRT Ghost. The biggest swim bait in our arsenal. Thing costs about 300 bucks, and we might stack that against some of his three dollar ones he bought. So you got one versus ten dollars, and you got three versus three hundred dollars. It could get wild, man. We're fishing some urban ponds. Is he throwing the cheap stuff, or are you throwing expensive stuff too? What are you doing? I'm not even sure yet, man. He's not even sure yet. So we're guaranteed to win on this one right here because we know we're gonna catch fish on these guys right here. Let's start throwing the DRTs. It's gonna be a good time. Let's go. So I'm kind of at a disadvantage as well because I forgot my tackle, man. So I'm going to have to be borrowing some of Ryan Riggs' terminal. He's going to hook us up with some hooks. Uh, he, he obviously supplied most of the baits. I brought the DRTs. I also brought the Ghost. We're going to have to switch out for the big rod here in a second if we're going to be breaking some of that stuff out. But I'm giving him an advantage because he's already rigging up. We don't necessarily have a consequence for the loser. It's really just how well are these baits going to perform. I have a feeling some of the cheap stuff could outperform the expensive stuff. So we're saving y'all money on today's vlog. Go ahead and subscribe. Drop a thumbs up for that right there if it is the case. Maybe we catch them all on the big expensive baits. I'm quite curious to see. We've also got a little tiny clash. We got a lot of different DRT expensive baits, soft plastic, hard baits from small to large in size. And I mean like a 15 inch hard bait as well. So let's go ahead. I got to rig a few things up and we're going to start casting out the DRT VTS 5s. Oh, we're on, we're on. VTS5, we're on. Hooked up. All right, y'all, I'm borrowing one of Ryan Riggs' hammer hooks. We're gonna go ahead and just go weightless, and I'm gonna toss that fluke-style DRT. I'm actually pretty pumped. Uh, the fluke bite is so much fun. The water here, it's good enough clarity for them to see these. It's got some nice shimmer and some purple color there, and I think we can make it happen. And then I'm actually gonna join him in throwing some of the cheap stuff so we can just showcase it all. There's some worms, there's a couple jigs. I see some craws, there's even a frog. Ryan just caught a gigantic fish on the Japanese frog. And, and it is summertime, so we got the Palomar knot tied. Let's rig up the first thing and we're gonna just kinda breeze through a whole slew of these and catch some fish for you guys, we do hope. Oh, we're breaking the seal. It's really happening. These are expensive. I think they come out to like $4 per bait which is like, <laughs> you can get a whole pack of Zoom Salty Super Flukes for like two, three bucks. So if you want to compare it to those, uh, <laughs> these are not budget friendly, but wow, they are pretty sick. The shape is way different than what we see out here oftentimes, which is good. I want something different. So you're going to rig this up like a Texas rig. You're just going to hook that nose, pop it out, slide it up, give that hook a 180. It's going to sit on the shelf there. And then I'm just going to expose this hook in the top in fact, I might not even have to since this is a fairly weedless kind of spot by itself. There's not too much grass to get caught up in. So uh, yeah, that looks just gonna stay right on top of the body, just kind of barely skin hooked. But when those fish bite it and you set the hook, you're gonna get them. Check that out, that is a sweet looking rig, a five inch, which is definitely a confidence size when it comes to soft plastic jerk baits for me. Uh, there's definitely those like Magnum flukes and those larger size Guggen Squad darts for instance But I typically throw a five inch when it comes to getting the most amount of bites And that's what we're hoping for today. Let's see how many fish we can catch on this thing. It all starts off by making the first cast. Let's go Oh, yeah slow fall. I'm just gonna give it a few pops let it sit Don't forget your polarized glasses too. get you some Guggen Squad gill goggles If you're talking about fishing a fluke because you can see those hits and as soon as your fluke disappears from just subsurface, you know you gotta set that hook. Oh, this is gonna be intense, man. We're gonna get smashed at the bank. I can feel it. You're gonna catch one so fast. Oh, oh, we're on, we're on. VTS5, we're on, hooked up. Come on, what do we got? Oh, nice, nice, y'all. First bass on the DRT, man. The purple Japanese bait coming in clutch, and this is the expensive one. Yes! Oh, it's a challenge, boys. Simmer down, boy. There we go. Ryan's hooked up two on the cheap baits. Get out of here, dude. Come on. 
Oh my gosh. Oh, you got me beat on the cheap stuff. He's bigger by a little bit. Gosh dang it. Hey, drop uh, DRT, I pay big money for this fish. Come on. $4 fish, $4 fish right there. No, no. And this thing is not working good now that I've caught a fish on it. It's just the, the little nose is messed up now. All right, y'all, this uh, bait lasted officially one fish and I'm gonna try something different. I'm gonna flip it upside down because it's not staying up on the shelf of this hook anymore. So hopefully that doesn't change the action too much, but now there's a smaller hole here on the opposite side. So what that means is hopefully it will stay on the hook as I pop it. It's just, uh, it's just lost its action because it keeps coming down and sliding off the hook. Just flipped it, should be fine. Let's get it back in the water. <laughs> Yo, are you on them? Yeah, dude. So, actually we're doing a frog like catch and cut. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that was Becca with a Sony camera question, y'all. I'm out here trying to win in this little tourney we got going and she wants to slow me down. <laughs> y'all know I'm playing, Becca's awesome. In fact, I think I have another video that I still haven't edited from when she was here that I got to put together. If y'all haven't checked out Fishing with Becca, she's up north doing largemouth bass fishing videos. Check her out. I'll, I'll try and remember to put her channel down in the description if you haven't already seen her. She's like got a bigger channel than me. I'm just, I'm, I'm a rookie out here. Any luck? Uh, one for me so far. Yes, sir. Thank you. I got, I got another one. I'm like, is this thing moving? <laughs> Dude, I had no clue this thing was on. He is as big as the bait. <laughs> there you go, y'all. Five inch flukes, just definitely a mad slayer. Numbers game out here. This is one for the fish tank. Maybe we should do a, uh, maybe we should like buy a fish tank and you know, like have a baby bass for a little while, kind of raise it up. I don't know, should we do that? Let me know down in the comments. I, I've never actually done it despite, you know, I've seen it on YouTube, but just not from our perspective. We've never had a baby bass. The, the cats and the dogs, man, who knows what would happen to that poor fish. It'd probably get eaten. Anyways, it is an option. I gotta figure out how on earth this hook and line. Now we are back in the money. Oh, that looks good. That was a nice little pop. That'll get their attention and we got him. Oh, he came off. Dang it, man, this plastic is getting messed up. It can hardly cast. All right, y'all, we're breaking out a second VTS-5. I'm, I'm just gonna use two of these and I'm gonna let Ryan use the other two because he's gonna showcase some of these for y'all on his channel. He might even catch the bigger fish today, so be sure to check out his video. But with that, I still got one more to try and go through. So let's rig this bad boy up and I'm gonna walk a little bit further around this place and see if we can catch something a little bit bigger. There's definitely some sizable fish in this spot and maybe we can hook into one on these hammer hooks, man. Let's see. I got a lot by this drain. Wow, that felt like a giant, which means it was probably a tree. That thing did not budge. Got him, good one, good one, there we go. There we go, nice. There we go. We got us a nice one, y'all. Nice urban bass. I don't know if he's going to go for two pounds, but I wouldn't doubt if he's uh, right on it or close to it. There we go, man. Nice solid fish on the DRT. Number three for me? I don't even know. You don't have your pliers, do you? Oh my goodness. We just got so lucky. I was able to get that hook out without the pliers. I didn't just forget my terminal. I forgot like all my stuff. The scale, the pliers, like it was a rookie move this is like one of the first times in weston's vlogging history he has forgot all the tools luckily ryan had all his stuff so if like i got a fish in an instance like that where i needed to rescue him with some pliers he had them on deck but i was gonna have to run around the pond and get them so in that case what you'd want to do you want to make sure you keep those fish in good health sprint to the other side give them a nice dip and then go ahead and work and get those out with pliers sometimes that's necessary always got to have pliers on you because you never know what will happen anyways we're gonna see how many more fish this guy can catch and then we're gonna switch over to some of those cheap baits and we're gonna see if they can do just as good because this thing is putting the hammer down I'm trying to turn my back to the wind so y'all can hear me what i did different on that one is i did not cast in a shallow area i actually cast it out deep and I worked it back in slowly from the deep. So there's a good chance some of these bigger fish are just hanging out in the deeper, cooler water where the sun isn't beating down on them now that it's getting to be hot water temps in summer. They'll definitely come up and they'll feed when they're hungry, right? Oftentimes, you know, sunrise, sunset, uh, great times to throw a fluke, pretty much parallel with the bank, almost like you would a top water. But as I said, uh, they oftentimes go out a little bit deeper into that cooler water, more comfortable during the summer heat, the peak of the day, and it is actually five o'clock in the afternoon. So they might just be hanging out down low, those bigger fish. So let's see if that's the truth. And we're gonna try and keep casting out deep and get a couple. Wow. Okay, that's actually a fish. Oh, little guy. I was gonna say, I barely even felt that one until he started like wiggling and head shaking with it. I think I'm on four fish now on these DRTs. <laughs> oh, no. 
I just got smacked. There we go. Got one. Got one. Not that bad, bro. I'm telling you, they like these flukes today, dude. This is catching all of them, man. Small ones, big ones. You are kidding me. He just flung the bait. I was going to reuse that, bro. All right, I think that's it, man. There goes my two. Caught, I think, five fish on them. Now we're going to switch it up. I'm going to see if Ryan Riggs going to let me use some of these dollar Asian market baits, and maybe we catch one on the bottom now. I found that bait he flung. We're going to go ahead and recycle this in Ryan's tackle backpack. Probably the number one reason why in Dallas-Fort Worth, for sure, there's no fishing sign. It's because fishermen and women are going out to these places, and they're leaving baits around the bank, and they're leaving beer cans around the bank in some cases, stuff like that, man. And then that's why the fishermen get a bad rap. Look at these jigs and craws. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave Ryan the better one. I, I'm assuming he's going to want this one right here. It says 3.5 grams, which I don't know how many ounces that is, but I have a feeling these are like eighth ounce jigs. They're like very small finesse looking stuff. This is even 2.5 grams. So pretty much the only weight I'm going to have on this is almost the trailer, that craw, which is apparently four inches, three pieces. I can't read this at all. <laughs> That's so funny. 2.5 grams, sir. This is a micro jig. I'm gonna catch a bluegill, hands down. So not gonna work. The hook on here is like so small. I'm gonna have to break this craw down to basically like just, like I already know just this right here. I'm taking off basically the entire body of my trailer because I'm only gonna be able to feed a little bit of this onto the hook and then leave those flippers. Dude, this is gonna look next level. Not gonna be a bad looking jig. And I'm gonna have to be light with my hook sets because I can almost guarantee you a dollar bait is going to have a hook that's going to bend out on you. It looks to have a bait keeper though, like maybe this craw is going to stay up on the hook and maybe it's just going to slide down. I think it's like already sliding down. This is the definition of a cheap bait that might just not work at all. But how cool is that? Finesse jig with a little craw on there, that's absolutely going to get a bite. It's just how long is this craw going to stay up on here? I think I need some super glue or something. Definitely need the super glue. Ryan's on. Sounds like a good one. I caught a big one out of here before, dude. Oh, so we got 10 pound line on here. I'm afraid it's gonna snap on me if I get too close. <laughs> That's nuts. Oh, Ryan just caught a, an absolute monster of a catfish on those freaking $1 worms. You guys have got to go check that out, dude. In the description, check out his video. He literally just hooked a giant on 10 pound line with a spinning combo and a baby worm. Nuts, dudes. What a gnarly fish. I got a feeling this might be a good spot for the jig. Yep, yep, first cast. Oh my gosh, it's running. It's running. First cast over here, guys, on the jig. Yes, no! I had one. Yep, on the jig. Dang it, man. That was on the $1 Japanese jig with the craw. Oh my gosh. I might go grab another rod if you're gonna chill. Are you gonna chill here or are you gonna move around a little? to the truck man i'm grabbing the finesse secret weapon for that jig uh i wonder if i should do drop shot or the jig so ryan is uh, rigging up a jig now i've still got that one tied on the go-to rod but i ran to the truck grabbed the finesse combo i got a twitch rod paired with that new corrado bfs that bait finesse system's real all right y'all we got the setup We're, we rigged up kind of like a green pumpkin watermelon red type of thing yeah it's more like a watermelon red flake actually 100 percent. it's got that red shimmer in there ryan was saying this worm was working out really good but it's funny man these worms are like a four pack and they're only a buck. And yet one of these has them individually packaged. Like they're in their own hard shell casing. It's very funny. Like, is this a good use of the like money they spent to make these things and try and make some profit? Ugh, look at that. All tightly packed in there. Worms individually in their own hard shell. That is funny, but they're a little bit smaller. And uh, Ryan was saying, I think the pop of that red flake was working out well for him. I definitely caught him a monster catfish that you guys have got to check out on his channel. So. There we go. Got one. Feels good. Oh, he came off. Wow. Oh, we still got the worm. All right, let's get back out there. Oh, got him. There he is. Back to back casts on the dollar drop shot. <laughs> let's go. Watermelon red flake. The cheap baits are working too, y'all. Let's go. That was two casts back to back. I would say they're liking the drop shot out there deep now. There we go. Got another little guy on the finesse worm come on up here city bass on the drop shot man heck yes another one on the dollar japanese bait let's go nice good one ryan's on with a good is that the jig long yep i haven't had long bite videos in a while man especially when you get two and one yeah say as soon as i hit the ground dude really oh, oh he came up 
Dang. I need another watermelon red flake. <laughs> Y'all, I would link these in the description, but I don't even know what brand they are. <laughs> a little trick with your drop shots too is just go ahead and hook them on your rod whenever you're walking down between the pond spots because that line will always get messed up. And I like to uh, just put the weight down there. That way, if you put your hook onto your hook holder of the rod, then that weight will just go all over the place and create a knot. So this is the best way to kind of travel with your drop shots is actually putting the weight on there, I have found. So we're gonna walk this down a little bit and try and fish some more of this pond that we haven't hit yet. They might be, I drop it in there or something. Chuck dropped it in there the other day and caught one. Can you? Can you? Yeah, right here. Oh. No way. Oh. Wow, dude, 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 on the dollar Japanese frog. What just happened? What just happened? <laughs> Out of the drain, he said. <laughs> this is at least like a three. I'd say maybe even a four. Like I've never was... thrown one that's white and red like that either. Like just totally weird colors. Uh, yeah, it's, I, as soon as I saw it, I was like, this is the one I want. It's crazy. It looks like a clown. And that's what I wanted to do, dude. Insane. Ryan just caught a gigantic fish on the Japanese frog out of the drain here. That is the $3 bait, and I was going to compare that to the $300 ghost here in just a little bit. So we're going to have to fish around a little bit more. I really want to break out the huge ghost swim bait for you guys to kind of compare and see which one can catch the bigger fish out of that and the frog. They're both going to entice those big strikes. Ryan just caught the biggest one of the day easily. Three pounds plus. It's got a summer bod. Go check out his channel, man. That was absolutely the craziest catch I have seen maybe this year. Literally tossed the frog up in this drain, like way up in there. And he's like, whoa, I thought he like got a look or a hit or like a little wake. No, he caught this friggin' bass out of there. Dudes. <laughs> All right, he's putting it on the scale. I got to help him out right here. Let's go. Here, we caught a lot of numbers quickly. There we go. Speaking of, first one out of this corner, drop shot. Let's go. One shot. Uh, oh, it's all good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, new spot. Let's roll. I have a feeling this drop shot is going to be getting caught up in these twigs quick. On no bites here, we have got one more spot to hit before I believe Ryan has got to split, and then it might just be you and I for the rest of the evening as we try and find one more pond to throw the ghost man. Left is the easy choice because you can get down by the water. Oh, got one. Oh, came off. No. No. Or does he still have it? Oh, he's still running with it. It's a little guy. It's a little, it's a micro bass. I'm like, he came off. <laughs> well, that did not take long, y'all. Dude, he would grow up quick. Now I'm kind of wanting a fish tank. Oh, I'm out. No more drop shot weight. Dang it, man. All right, well, that might be the end of it for me, you guys, at this pond. A nice little way to end fishing with Ryan Rigg, though, out here. All right, y'all. It is just me at the final ponds of the night and we're doing it we're breaking out the 300 dollars bait right here man this is the ghost freaking gigantic let's see if we can close it out with a nice catch on the big beefy setup right here the tranks 400 man 25 pound fluorocarbon gomexis handles you know the whole deal i'm gonna go ahead tie my knot i found some line cutters in the truck thank goodness and we are gonna have at it and see if i can put ryan's four pounder on that frog to shame with really what is considered the ultimate japanese swim bait i mean there's no denying drt has a huge following if we catch a fish on this could be the biggest fish i've caught all year like hands down it could get nuts right now guys all right let's see what we got here in the rocks Dude, look at this thing swimming. It is gig. This is freaking huge. I just need a reaction strike. Come on. <laughs> Seeing if I can get any sniffs before the sun really sets. To close out an epic day of fishing, man. What a day on the Japanese swim baits. Pumped for Ryan on all his catches, man. I think he had 20 pounds in his top three fish. Just like ridiculous. Yes, there was some catfish in there. Unexpected. The icing on the cake is one on the ghost for sure. Let's keep at it for a minute. We'll catch y'all at the car otherwise if we don't link up with anything. You, you get it a lot when you throw these things, I guess, but <laughs> it's funny too. People's reactions like, man, you can't use that. Only artificial lures here. I've had people tell me in like their HOAs. It's comical. <laughs> go have a good night y'all what a video today had an absolute blast with Ryan Ray you have to go check out his video I think it's gonna be five times more entertaining he caught some insane fish and from his perspective it's gonna be all the sweeter on that GoPro man he was cranking in the big catfish on the spinning reel he also had that bass 
right like I was probably just right there in frame as he like set the hook dude cast it way up in the drain and anyways if you'd like to see more challenges like this something off the wall completely different showcasing just new styles of uh, baits and techniques I threw quite a bit of tips out in today's video so I do hope you enjoyed it uh, let us know Ryan Rigged and I would love to get out and do more uh, fishing together as well as possibly more challenge style videos for you guys so please let us know down in the comments don't forget to drop a like subscribe to the channel I even hit one more spot with the ghost before I ended the evening just because you really got to give that bait time. It is a true challenge to try and catch a city bass in ponds on a bait of that caliber. But we tried to make it happen. Couldn't quite connect and that is quite all right. But hopefully we can get one on the ghost again here very soon. At some ponds though, a little bit different than fishing off the boat, which is where I got my first couple catches on it. We've given that bait a lot of time and like I say, those bites are just hard to come by. Mad shout out to DRT on those baits today that we threw, as well as the Asian market that I believe Ryan got those baits from in Plano, Texas for a buck per pack. I think that frog was like three bucks and we had a ton of fun putting this video together. So we'll catch you guys on the next one. Till then y'all, peace out.